are going live with a live stream here at Duke Spine Institute, Surgery Center Vieira. We're going to be doing a Duke laser disc repair. This is an endoscopic spine surgery. It's a more advanced type of spine surgery. You won't hear about it in most places because most doctors don't know how to do this surgery. Most surgeons are older surgeons do things like laminectomies and microdiscectomies. Newer, better trained surgeons do fusions and artificial discs. But the most advanced surgeons in the world do all of those things plus endoscopic spine surgery. And that's what we do at Duke Spine. So our patient here Our patient here has two herniated discs, and he did not want fusion or artificial discs. He wanted less invasive surgery that did not involve fusion. So he came to see us so we could do endoscopic spine surgery and repair his discs. Are you okay? All right, how's our blood pressure? Can you recheck it? Try to get into the 20s, or teens would be even better. All right. Let's try this again. Shot? All right, better. Your draping has uh, confused me today. Shot, but I can't blame you for that. What oh, it's too high? Uh, I need some more local. How is he? How is he doing? Pain medicine doesn't even work, unfortunately. We're giving you some more numbing medicine, okay? Unbelievable, right? But you got to be careful what you say because you might upset somebody. You know, and then they're going to not like you. And but yes, that's why they bring it, number one. Number two, so we can know what pain medication they're taking. Yeah. So does she take Valium normally? No, she was prescribed like Got it. All right, I still think we're off on the orbit. So I'm using the x-ray machine, folks, if you're paying attention. Um mm -hmm. Go to the x-ray shot, Kevin, and I'm trying to line the x-ray up with the spine so I can navigate properly. If you don't get the navigational stuff right, you're going to end up somewhere you're not supposed to be. I, I think it looks worse. Um, if I can at least get that sacral S1 superior uh, facet lined up, it'd be great. Keep going a little more than that. Let's see if we can get better. So there's no point in me advancing the needle if I don't know where I'm going. Um, and I need the x-ray machine to be lined up properly to do that. I think we need to go back a little maybe. It's kind of hard to tell, Sean. Our patient does have scoliosis, so that's probably okay. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. He's got scoliosis at L5-S1, all right? A lot of people that have disc injuries end up with scoliosis, the twisting. The twisting isn't the problem, but it does make my job harder, Sean. So I'm trying to um, navigate around. Are you awake? All right. You're doing good. I'm just making my way down to the bottom part of the spine. Okay, Sean? Yeah. So we need to be a little more medial. Sean? I need my trajectory to be a little bit better. Sean? Let's go AP, see where we are. I use the x-ray machine on the front 
to back view as well as the side to side view. We call the side to side view lateral, we call the front to back view AP. So AP and lateral are the two primary views we use. Sometimes we do oblique where we go from the side. All right. So right there, you can actually see the scoliosis. Why don't you show them the scoliosis using the spinous processes once you get back to a lateral? Oh, I guess it's too late now. All right, that's, that's actually fine. No, that's fine. Well, we can look at it later. Are you comfy? Sean, where do you feel that? In your back? I need to know if it's in your back or your leg. Back is good. That means we're getting close to the bad part that we're going to fix. Whole scoliosis stuff. Sean, it's just terrible. That looks pretty good to me. Why don't you give me an AP? Let's just make sure. So we've entered the L5S1 disc. If you see the needle, it's gone through the foramen at L5S1. We call it transforaminal. And I'm inside the disc. Scoliosis. Yeah, show them the scoliosis. Look at the spinous processes. Yep. And there it goes to the side like that and then back again. Very nice. That's Crystal, our nurse. Vanna White. <laughs> Move over, Vanna. We have Crystal. Honestly, Vanna White couldn't even done that. You Only you could do that. All right. There you go. And you showed it so well. I like how you curved the arrow. And <laughs> All right. So we're done entering the L5S1, the hardest one to get to. Next is L4-5. Are you okay? All right. Good. So we made our incision just now. It's seven millimeters. The whole surgery will be done through this little seven millimeter incision. And then we're going to do the next disc which is L4-5. Shot? Can you line up that 4-5 a little bit better? It's not terrible. You're about 90% there, but I think we could do just a little bit better. Luis? Yes, Shot? It's always best to oh, yeah, yeah. prep just, and drape. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. not my yeah, signature. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. use your landmarks, yeah, the yeah. butt crack and yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. among other things. Shot? Okay. You can't rely on my, my mark. You know my mark is not where the uh, actual incision is, right? I know, I know. You know that, yeah, you yeah. know that. Shot? My mark is just where I happen to stick it. Usually I'm right, Shot, but Sometimes I want to try to see if you're paying attention, so I might put it somewhere it's not supposed oh. to be. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, here we are, four or five, and going in. Are you awake? Are you having any pain? No? What did he say? He said no. All right, good. Shot. Now, I'm actually entering the disc through the actual tear in the back of the disc that caused the herniation or allowed the herniation to occur. Yeah. Yeah. On this one All right. So far, we've lost two drops of blood. I'll show them to you. One there. You see those? You see those? One there and one there. Kevin, I got to hear you. No. Yes, yeah, sir. I saw it. Sir? I saw it. Which? Uh, sir is not you. Trust me. <laughs> You're a lot younger than me, my friend. All right, everyone. This is L4-5. And this is L5-S1. So we know he has two injured discs based on the MRI. One at 5-1, one at 4-5. At 5-1, it's not just blown out. It's actually hitting the nerve root as well. So he's got that left leg some problems. Okay. Are you comfortable? Yes? 
He is? All right. So he's sensa sensating things. You like that? Sensating? Mm -hmm. He is aware. Are you comfy? How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? Shot. Wow, it came out, huh? How high did it go? What's the highest it went? I can't hear. I got all these noises. Well, he jumped off the bed almost. So maybe, what did you give him for? Was it fentanyl? All right. All right. Wow, that, that stuff just leaked out, huh? Pretty quick. It's already gone. Well, we're not going to get a reliable response, but you can see his body tensed up. You don't do that for a one or a two. How bad is that shot? Okay, he's got big tears. Huge tears. How bad was that? All right, very good. Uh, I wouldn't say it's very reliable. Okay. I would say not reliable. Uh, I would just say painful. Okay. Just leave it at that. We know that. We know that much. Okay, he can go to sleep, but you got to tell him he's going to go to sleep. Can you count out loud for me? From one to a hundred. Keep going. You're doing good. Keep counting. All right, so we should be at 5-1. There it is. We're going to remove the needle, and we're leaving the guide wire. The guide wire is like a, a road, a navigational um, road for us that tells us exactly where to go, where it's safe. Shot? Shot? can see that big wad of dye in the epidural space. That will all go away in a few hours. It should be gone by tomorrow. It's just dye and mostly saline or salt water. Nice and loud. Keep going. Can you count in Spanish, please? Very good, very good. Vente ocho, I heard it, we're good. Keep going. If you get to 100, we don't pay the anesthesiologist today. I'm serious. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, he's so mean. Keep going. All right, would you rather have an instrument thrown at you or would you rather have, right? It's like neither. Do you know it was thrown at you? Was it a retractor? What kind of retractor? Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. Really? There you go. Well, at least it was blunt ended, you know. It wasn't sharp. Um, uh, an Army Navy. It was an Army Navy. He threw the Army and the Navy at you. He meant business. Shot? Don't ask me why. I guess it was developed in the Army and the Navy, probably. But it's a very common general surgery, GI doctor type of instrument, Army Navy. My gosh, this floral is like totally in my way. You know what? 
I will rebel. I will come up here. Shot? Shot? Feels like it's going in. It might work better the other way. Maybe. Let's see. We're in there. Like Flynn. In like Flynn. Don't worry, I got you covered. Shot? All right. Right? So, folks for, for that are watching, we're going to do this patience two discs in his lower back, L45, L5S1. Both discs started with an annular tear in the back. Both discs have herniations. The bottom one is worse, um, but they're both causing his pain and they're both pushing on nerves going down his left leg. I think that's good. So we're gonna do the entire surgery through a tiny tube. And I'm gonna show you that tube in just a second here. We're taking the dilator out, our patient's sleeping nicely, and now we've got this tube in. We're gonna fix both herniated discs in his lower back with one little cut, seven millimeters long. It's a quarter inch. <clears throat> now, I've done 1,400 of these surgeries, and we've never had a patient whose pain didn't go away. The pain from their disc. Okay? And just so you understand, there are many causes of back pain that are potential, but the most common is a disc injury, a herniated disc with an annular tear. There are other causes like the sacroiliac joints, the piriformis muscles, the facet joints, the bones can be fractured. How are we doing guys? Scope on, blue towel, I got it. Now we were gonna try something new here today, I thought Luis, with the drape. The little plastic things, whatever. All right. All right. Well, there's the disc, and you can already see the damage to the disc. Not the damage I created, but the damage that has pre-existed me. Um, this just looks like crab meat. This is not normal. This disc is obviously damaged. There's been inflammation and tear. And that's what we're, these are all little pieces of herniation. So we're gonna remove them with the grabber. But you know, for people that say, oh, why do you have to use the laser? The grabbers that we use in surgery don't work well. They don't do a very good job. They're great at grabbing things that are loose and pulling them out. But they're not really that good at, at removing things that are stuck. But guess what's really good at removing things that are stuck? the laser, hence the Duke laser disc repair. All right, here we are, we're ready. You need to put my laser pedal where I can put my foot, okay? You understand? Yeah. So when I'm doing 5-1, it's always gonna be angled out towards the shoulder. So you have to figure out where I'm gonna stand. We're ready to get, get into this. Now that's a nice looking picture right there. Okay, that's a nice lens rod configuration. We could uh, bump the lighting, the brightness up one click, maybe to get a little better picture. Let's go up one click. I found the two names of two globes. When I call wolf. That's good, which one? Yeah. I think that may be too much, let's see. You went up one click or two? One click. Go down one, it's, too, it's overexposed. There we go, that's better. So when I call directly, uh, yeah, call wolf. wolf. Yeah, they say they're not allowed to tell me that information. They're not allowed to yeah. tell you. I hate wolf. So when I talk to huh? I, it's on the right? When I talk to IES, the one that he 
spare, they use OEM uh, wolf glue. No. Oh, that's wolf. That's what they they use wolf glue. Yes. OEM wolf. And then, but he told me in that email that most of the time he used laser to weld. Laser? To weld them. To weld the lens in? Yes. Well, then how come it's falling out? Is that his or maybe that's not his that's broken? I told Do you him know? That's a, a little message and he sent me back on the email. All right. Yeah, just to let you know that. Kevin, are you broadcasting? Yes, sir. I can't hear him. Yes, sir. All right, good, yeah. So for, for those of you watching, how do herniated discs cause back pain? A lot of people wondered for years, and we discovered how herniated disc caused back pain at Duke Spine Institute. We put it in a video animation to make it easier for you to learn and understand why herniated disc caused back pain. It has everything to do with a tear in the annulus and inflammation. Why don't you show them, Kevin? Traumatic injury to the disc can cause annular tears to form. Pressure on the disc causes herniation of the nucleus pulpus through the annular tear. Inflammatory tissues develop within the annular tear causing back pain. The inflamed annular tear generates pain signals. Additional injuries can cause symptoms to worsen. Inflammation from the annular tear can spread to nearby nerve roots, causing leg pain. Signals travel up nerves to the brain, causing localized back pain. Pain signals reach the primary somatosensory cortex, causing conscious awareness of pain. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, Submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Um, once I eliminate this material, this disc will no longer be painful. That's the essence of the Duke Laser Disc Repair. <clears throat> it's funny, I was having a discussion with somebody on Facebook the other day, and she was arguing with me. First of all, she wasn't a physician, and she, I was in a support group trying to help people in pain to learn more about why they're in pain. And she was one of those trolls. All she could do was just say, no, no, laser doesn't, doesn't, isn't needed. Laser doesn't work. I'm like, when did you do your spine surgery residency? When did you become a doctor? You didn't? I mean, it's like, it's incredible how many people are so opinionated about things they have no experience themselves with. Okay, that's the end plate of S1 over there to the right. It's kind of a golden color. And the tear is right here. And we're going to clean up both sides. I'm facing up towards the L5 end plate. But you can see the torn fibers of the annulus. And this is what's allowed the jelly to escape. The annulus normally has around 25 ring, rings of collagen that hold the jelly in place. When you tear through all 25, that's when the jelly escapes. We call that a herniation. Now, some herniations 
are bulges, and a bulge is a herniation that hasn't fully escaped yet, but it's almost there. Um, and it's still inside the tear, but almost completely through. Or maybe it is even a little bit completely through, but isn't s just sticking out in the epidural space. So tears are common. And when you get that nuclear jelly stuck in the tear, that's where the inflammation starts. And that's what we're here to fix with the Duke Laser Disc Repair. Duke Laser Disc Repair is the only surgery in the world that addresses the tear in the year 2022. Uh, we started doing the Duke Laser Disc Repair in 2006. So for the last, what is that? 16 years, the Duke Laser Disc Repair has been the only surgery that addresses the source of pain in the back specifically. And guess what? We do it without metal or plastic implants. We do it without stem cells. We do it without PRP. We do it without having to do open surgery. So it's less invasive, more effective, all natural. And this is outpatient, by the way, for those of you wondering. And we had a request from one of our viewers in the last surgery. I think actually this was on Tuesday on our YouTube channel. Somebody said, can you, can you show us the nerves when you're done with the laser part? And of course we can. I'm gonna show you the nerves in just a few minutes. As soon as I'm done with the debridement. Do we have any questions from our audience? No questions so far. Thank you. Why don't you uh, run for our audience then the video animation that shows exactly what we're doing with the laser here, how we're debriding the tear to get rid of the infl inflammation and restore normal function to the disc. Can you do that? Yes, sound good. Three, two, one. All right, nice job. The inflamed annular tear causes back pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes leg pain. A band-aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. from Puerto Rico originally and now from Virginia. And he actually came here for what we call the double whammy, right? It's kind of like going to McDonald's and ordering a cheeseburger and a pizza, okay? We're doing the neck and the back. He had his cervical laser done on Tuesday, and today we're doing his lower back, lumbar. So, all right, we are still in the L5S1, and I could see fragments of herniation here that want to come out, they need to come out. So the annular tear um, is in the annulus, obviously, but where in the annulus it is differs for different patients, okay? And in the case of this patient, the annular tear was a little bit um, higher in the disc, in the annulus.
Remember, the golden color is calcification, so that's older stuff. It's been around for years. The um, softer, whiter, fleshier stuff or bluer stuff that zaps away quickly with the laser, that's um, newer herniation. So most herniations are a mixture of old and new herniations. Um, some people will herniate 20 times and they'll have 20 fragments that we have to take out. Some people will herniate 30 times and they'll have 30 fragments. Remember, people live with back pain for many years and those episodes where the pain gets worse, they've re-herniated basically and stirred up the inflammation in their disc. In doing so, they've created more pain and then the disc will try to heal. So it's a cycle of re-injury and repair. Re-injury and repair. Over and over again. Sometimes 30, 40 years. The worst thing is when people don't know what's happening. And that's why we broadcast. So we can teach everyone what's really happening in their back or neck to cause their pain and symptoms. It is the herniated disc. And more importantly, it is fixable with the right treatment. There's a piece of herniation right there. Grab her. We had a visit this week from um, Max Moore Spine. The owner of the company came to meet with me. He's very interested in working with Duke Spine to really promote endoscopic spine surgery in the United States. Mm -hmm. Which images? The oh yeah? yeah the images. Good. We're very happy that he's taken an interest because after uh, my time talking to him and discussing sort of where is endoscopic spine surgery today worldwide, the truth is the United States is far behind other countries like China and Korea and Germany because those countries are looking for ways to improve outcomes and save money and they they do it with endoscopic surgery the only problem is they don't do the duke laser disc repair and these countries are only really mainly doing lumbar there's not much cervical happening so so the quality of the treat the treatment is lower and the uh, results are not as good as we get at Duke Spine, which is one of the reasons why he was talking to me to try to figure out how do we get such good results. I said, read the paper. I put it all in there. It's all there. Right, Luis? We broadcast it every week. Does anybody out there know the answer? Besides our team here. Let's see who's been paying attention. All right, this is L5S1. This disc is pretty badly damaged. I've got to say, this is one of the worst cases of internal disc disruption I've seen. It just looks like, um, it looks like uh, crab meat. Very dried out, desiccated, and collagenized. No takers. We do have one question from Derek from Facebook. But nobody is answering my question as to why 
our technique at Duke's Vine is different and better? Why it's so successful? No takers yet. Hmm. All right. Let's hear our question from Derek on Facebook. He's asked, has Dr. Duke found time to get back to his coral reef work? <laughs> Derek, Derek, Derek. Who are you, Derek? Uh, where is Derek from? I can't say right now. He can't say or you can't say? I'm not able to see that information. No, but ask him. Uh, he's probably listening. I hope. Where are you from, Derek? Minnesota. Minnesota. It is not a Derek that I know then, most likely. Maybe I do. Well, Derek, the answer is no. But it's funny you ask, because just yesterday I did go back to the Coral Reef store to meet with some of my friends, the owners, and I said to them, that's the first time I've been in there, by the way, in about a year and a half, and I said, I'm not coming here because I'm starting up again. It's the first thing I said. I didn't want to get their hopes up. You know, because normally when I walk in, I drop a lot of money buying fish and corals. I said, I'm not buying anything. I'm just coming by to say hi and kind of check things out. So the answer is no, I haven't. Uh, it's really, I know what it's going to take. It's going to take um, almost a full-time effort for me to go back to doing the coral research. And it's just time I don't have right now. I'm really busy trying to help more people with the surgery and get them better. Um, but it is my dream eventually to, to go have a big coral reef lab. He may be a little light. And to finish my research on how to cure corals and keep them from dying. Like I said before, I've discovered the cause of the coral's death, which nobody really believes me. It's pretty funny. And uh, I've published it, but I have not developed a cure. So I figure I have time because nobody's really working on the right area. And I've done so much experiments already on so many different treatments. There's not many left. I still hadn't found a natural predator for the parasites. Even when I was looking almost every single day, I was spending eight hours a day in my lab and weekends just conducting research science, you know, research projects, experiments, trying to kill the parasite without killing the coral. And I was unsuccessful. Anytime I, I could kill the parasite in, a, in vitro and I could kill the parasite in the coral, but I couldn't cure the coral of the parasite completely without also killing the coral. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I just don't have time right now. And uh, I got no support from the community, from the world at all. People are wrongly believing it's global warming or suntan oil or whatever else they think. But the real reason is the parasite. And um, you know, I'm just gonna have to probably do it again on my own. Like I did figure out what, how to cure back pain. So I just don't have the energy and time right now. I'm kind of building up, you know, getting ready to go to war. But it's going to take me a few years to amass the resources and the mental energy. I know what needs to be done. I need a, a research assistant or two. Uh, I need some equipment. Believe it or not, you'd be amazed at what you can buy on Amazon. I built out my entire lab from Amazon. Uh, and I had to buy a bunch of chemicals outside of Amazon but to do the tests. Do you remember when we radiated those things with the uh, x-ray machine? Yeah. We gave them how many gray? Like nine gray, huh? Yeah. I radiated 
some parasites that were I, I know are killing the coral. They didn't kill them. No, they were just happy as bees afterwards. They got nine gray. Nine freaking gray. I mean, there are tumors that die from nine gray. And they had, there was no effect on the parasites. I tried electrocution. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's complicated, but people have shown that corals grow better in electrical fields. So I thought I'd try it. Huh? No, 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 no. No, they've just shown that coral growth rates are increased in, electric, in electrical fields out in the ocean. There's experim experiments that have shown that, but then other people haven't been able to reproduce it. Anyway, long story short, I've tried so many things, and of course all the antibiotics around the world, exotic stuff, natural chemicals. And again, I could kill the parasites, I just couldn't kill them without killing the coral. So that's where I left it, and I have some more work to do. But thank you for asking, Derek. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you did. And uh, it's nice to hear from you. We've been off the air for a couple of weeks because we lost our videographer. Uh, he didn't die or anything, he just left. But um, now we have Kevin, and Kevin in like two days is already doing really so well. Uh, and I think he's excited about this program and how to improve it. And we're going to make it more um, interesting and more educational every time. That's our goal. So we're going to keep broadcasting. I do. I have a lot. Yes, why? I have a couple of 300 gallons in my living room. Yeah. I don't do fresh water. I started with fresh water many years ago and I did it for like a month and then I went to salt water. Oh, they're beautiful. I what? Used to have snakes, yeah. Not just snakes, but lizards and snakes. Very big ones. Oh yeah, I had a green anaconda. I had an emerald green tree boa. I had big. Yeah, I had the biggest snake in the world, the anaconda. Well, my mom had some truth serum. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I used to be. California? Yeah. Well, there's the ring neck snakes, which we have here, too. I actually found a bunch of ring necks one time at my house here. I guess uh, mother had must have had a clutch, and uh, they just tons of them. But um, yes, snakes for years through med school, college and med school, and big lizards, um, monitors. My favorite animal has always been the Komodo dragon. I've always wanted one. Are you awake? Right? I, I, I was practicing. I had a Nile uh, water monitor oh and it got huge here in Florida. And then one day my gardener um, went out there and was weeding, weed whacking, unplugged his warming blanket, an electrical blanket, and when I went out to feed him, he was frozen stiff. Oh it was in the winter. He was six feet, six, seven feet long. Was he in a big, like, pen? Yeah, I had a dog pen and I would feed him eggs and rats. He was such a happy animal. Really miss him. Call him Sal for Salvador, for salvation. See, uh, my buddy was a neurosurgeon and he got cancer right after fel finishing fellowship. Chris, Chris Kaposchkin. Anyway, um, his dream was to have a monitor. His wife wouldn't let him. And then when he got cancer, she agreed. He only had a year to live and he told me, I'm only gonna get the lizard on one condition that you promise you'll take it when I die. 
so I did. I took it. I remember he died, and then literally two weeks later, I get a FedEx package. It's a box. Literally just stuck it in a box and sent it. Honestly, I never really liked her. Uh, two feet. I mean, literally, I'm like, two. Oh, I, I took it from two feet to six feet. I had no idea what it was. There was no letter, no note, nothing. So Just a FedEx box. I cut it open, and then this giant lizard slides out of it. Like, I mean, are you kidding me? You can't. It had to have been cold. It must have froze. She didn't care. No, don't even make me think about it. I'm so angry with her. Her name was Lisa. But anyway, I made a promise to Chris and I honored it. I kept Sal in my garage for years as he got bigger and bigger and bigger. He just got too big and I had to put him outside. They, no, they get to be about a tip to, of the nose to the tip of the tail, eight feet. And he was six and a half when he died. He never bit me once. His claws were massive. I mean, oh. I would hold them sometimes and his claws would dig into my flesh. So I started wearing a leather jacket. Oh yeah, well, he does, they, don't, they don't cuddle cuddle, but I would cuddle him. Whether or not he wanted to be cuddled, I was gonna cuddle him. <laughs> I even tried putting a dog collar and walking him. But he, no, they don't walk, they don't do that. Yeah, I mean, whatever, you know, he doesn't go where you want him to go, and you're not going to get him to go where you want him to go, trust me. They're so powerful. You have no idea how strong those animals are. All muscle. So, huh? Pet doves? Nice. Oh, ducks. Nice. Yeah. I gotta say, it's I. Oh God. I d I've never heard of anyone having a duck as a pet. Never. We still have another level to do. Is he okay? The patient may be a little light. I'm just letting our anesthesiologist know. So this is the end of the herniation. For those of you watching, I'm just trying to get the last bit uh, as much as I can. And I've gone back as far as I can with the tube that I can do safely. I may be able to get another millimeter, but you don't want to go too far back because you'll expose all the veins and you might get bleeding, but more importantly, there's a nerve running, running right there and you certainly don't want to get that nerve. That's the exiting nerve, I'm sorry, the uh, traversing route we call. It would be S1. And I can see that it's not there, so I'm good. This is just fat right there. I don't mind zapping the fat a little bit. The fat's, taking the fat down is not a problem. It's not gonna do anything good or bad. Why is there so much fat in this area? Anybody know? It's the same reason we see fat by the facet joints when there's chronic inflammation. 
it's energy source, right? That's what fat is. A a fat acts in your body primarily as an energy source, but also as a, a padding, like a cushion. So, and what needs to be cushioned here is the nerve root, right? The nerves need to be cushioned. See a little vein there at the two o'clock, one or two o'clock position? You guys see the little vein right there? It's got a thin wall and you can see the blood in it. Arteries have thicker walls. You don't see the blood in them. They're just white. All right, I'm about to be done at this level and I'm gonna show you guys. By the way, this is all scar tissue, this white stuff here that I'm working on right there. See the calcium deposits? That's like years and years ago. That's where the, when this thing first started causing pain for him, that's the outer wall of the annulus right there. And outside the annulus, you have the posterior longitudinal ligament and you've got all those blood vessels that are there. All right, let's see if I can grab any of that in case there's some herniation in it. And then we'll be pretty close to being done with L5S1. Yeah, keep it on. It's fine. She can wear a collar. Okay. Most people don't like the collar. There's a piece of herniation right there. Beautiful. This is going very nicely for this patient. Just little pieces of herniation. Just keep taking them out. I think I can get a little bit more down there. And then I'm going to have to call it quits. Okay, just about done. Do a little bit more. So this is a lumbar endoscopic surgery, transforaminal, as opposed to interlaminar. Interlaminar, very different kind of surgery, not as good, causes a lot of damage. This surgery causes no damage whatsoever. Literally, we end up right inside the disc tear and the herniation. There's no damage to any of the normal structures. It's beautiful. Very elegant type surgery. This is the best you can do. The most surgeons that do endoscopic surgery, sorry, Luis. I just, I, I miss, misstep. Most surgeons that do endoscopic surgery they don't do um, a transforaminal at L5-S1. They go interlaminar. And what that means is they're going to be taking out parts of that patient's uh, spine, normal parts. There's another piece of herniation. So by going transforaminal, we're actually preserving the natural, normal spine. Just about done. His angle of incline is quite steep. Doctor, I mean done with this disc. We still have one more to go. Sorry. Don't mean to mislead you there. Well, you can see we're getting around the fecal sac almost there anteriorly. I'm slipping in in front of the nerve root. That'd be the S1 nerve root exiting. I'm going to, I mean, uh, traversing. I'm going to show you the exiting route right now. As soon as I'm done, I'll show it to you. We're pretty much done here. I'm gonna take a quick look in the back. This is lateral. So this will be like a collateral herniation in the outside the foramen, heading towards the extra foraminal zone. Just wanna make sure there's nothing out here. We do see Extreme lateral herniations and extra foraminal herniations from time to time. So 
there's a definitely a tear here. I just want to make sure I debulk this thing properly and try to debride it, the annulus, debulk the herniation and debride the annulus. Reduce the risk of reherniation. What's the issue, ladies? Everything okay? Yes. All right, laser off. I'm going to show you the uh, exiting route. It's going to be right in this fat. Okay, great. So I'm not going to be able to show you the exiting route because it's in the fat. Uh, let me have a grabber. Somebody wanted to see the exiting route, but I can't help the fact that there's a lot of fat there in the foramen. But the exiting route's in that fat. So, yeah, just a lot of fat. Okay. We're done. Scope off. I'm going to put a little antiseptic down just to clean things up. And then we're going to irrigate it out. Luis, I wanted to talk to you. I have an idea for the rhizotomy. You know the laser we're using is a half a millimeter wide, right? Are there wider laser fibers? They are, I think, uh, like yeah. much wider. Yes. Well, not that much. See what I the. Have the I, have the, I have the size. I can I'm putting this down for a second. Yes, yes, I need yes. the widest laser fiber you can find that's straight firing okay. for this laser. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Like if you have a two millimeter, I'd be interested. Okay. All right. So we are done with one level, L5S1. We're taking the tube out. Now we're going to do the L45 next. Yes. So this patient has two discs that are problematic. Again, the worst one is 5.1. We just fixed it. Now we're going to go to the next disc above. If you stay in the AP configuration, I'm going to throw an Army Navy at you. I'm talking to Monica. <laughs> All right, Monica, if you had to have a choice, Army Navy versus Prevagen, what would you choose? Throw the privilege at you <laughs> or swallow the Army Navy. <laughs> Sorry. How many times have I told you we don't do AP? <laughs> you, you're killing me. All right, all right, all right. That's why I was waiting to see what you were going to Okay, I like it. <laughs> That's the same answer my wife would give me, just so you know, because she is never wrong. Never wrong. And I mean never. Never, never, never. Huh? Yes. I'm not letting her go. If you're asking if she can go, I'm not ready. To, I'm, I'm coming out. I'll be out in 10 minutes. What is it? Uh, she's more comfortable with the collar? She can keep the collar on. Then she's not telling us about something she's taking. So go figure out what she hasn't told us. There's something we're missing. Does that make sense? Has she gotten her dilated oral? How much? Did she get dilated? Are you kidding me? Of course she needs the dilated PO. We just slit her neck open. Do you understand, Rita? When a patient has that kind of surgery, they need all the normal stuff.
plus on top of that four milligrams of dilaudid every four hours almost it's not a standing order but it's prm but it should be given yeah she's i told the nurse she needs the oxycodone 10 milligram oxycodone plus the four milligram of dilaudid po for breakthrough pain honestly pain management is not hard it's so easy as long as you do what you're supposed to do yeah we just did the most painful surgery i could possibly do on a patient so and we don't have anything i mean iv dilaudid is gone in what 30 minutes max 20 minutes All right. I'm not even going to say anything. No, but it's, it's the concept. Conceptually, it's so simple. And the problem is, is that A, the patient suffers. B, you guys are going to be here later. Just saying. Shot. Huh? Totally avoidable. Totally avoidable. Maybe I should make you the pain nurse. <laughs> the what do you, what do you call it? Huh? Like what is a? They used to have. We used to have a pain nurse. I think. I want to say we did. Yeah, we had a pain nurse at Chance. Like she would go around, you know, do pain consults. Sean? Yeah, if you had a patient who was in pain, you would call the pain nurse. And she would go by and do a consult. Right? Well, I mean, physically, you could be here. But. Yeah, but peop people shouldn't need Valium. I don't know why Damola prescribed her. I know. I don't know why, but I guess maybe she's got, I don't know, a tolerance to the. Muscle relaxer. Uh huh. Floral shot. Yeah. No, no, we're good. We're good. I just wanted. Kevin, did you go to the floral? I wasn't saying shot. Yeah, I did. But we were taking floral pictures. Sometimes we do that. We use telepathy here at Duke Spine to communicate. Right, Flynn? <laughs> we have the hive mind. Do you know what the hive mind means? Of Kevin, you can be part of the hive mind someday. <laughs> no, I don't. What does that mean? No, it means that we all think alike. We're all thinking the same thing because we work together so much, like bees in a hive. Stop on, please. You know? We don't even have to really communicate. We just flap our wings and create oscillations in the air, little vibrations to communicate. So when I start flapping my arms around the OR like this, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Kev. We're just having some fun. If I don't laugh, I'd have to cry sometimes. All right, so we're starting the next disc, which is the L45. We've completed L5S1. And I can tell you already, this disc is badly damaged. Honestly, it looks damaged internally about the same as the last one, which on a scale of one to 10, I'd give it about an eight.
I used 44. Yeah, that's just a lot. Wow. Yeah, but look at this thing. It's just so dried up and so chonky. We call it chonky. Chonky. I think it was his cervical the other day. He used his cervical cord only practically left, but it was good to know. Yeah, cervicals are usually under 10. Really? Hmm. You're very observant. I like that. It's not weird. It's good. It's good. Mm. Just keep thinking about that scenario that happened five minutes ago. And it just... I just don't understand. Can you? That would be great. It's real simple. Whatever they take before their surgery, they have to keep taking that same day. And then on top of it, you give extra. But the patients trust us that we're doing it right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to take both at the same time. That's the whole point. If you uh, normally eat 1,000 calories a day, and then you start climbing Mount Kil Kilimanjaro, you know, your caloric needs are going to go up. You're going to go from 1,000 to... 4,000 a day, you know, if you're m me, you know, 6,000. But um, <laughs> my point is simple. If the baseline amount is X, then after, you know, increased demand or need, you're going to need X plus something, X plus Y. You can't just keep giving X. Yeah, but it's four milligrams PO. It's not IV. Yeah. I mean, I told the nurse specifically what to do. I said, give it 30 minutes. If she's still in pain, you give four milligrams oral. <coughs> and I guess that, that didn't happen, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to have to go figure it out. You know, I don't mind Toradol, too, if we have to. But I want to exhaust the, the other route first. All right? On the what? I don't mind using Toradol on any of my spine cases. I'd prefer not to, you know, because, because I don't want uh, bleeding, you know? But that said, if the patient's in so much pain, I mean, that first of all, if they're in a lot of pain, you need to address why. And it's always going to be a human error, 99% of the time. We're not giving them the appropriate coverage. But let's say you've done everything right, and they're still in pain. Some Toradol is OK after spine surgery. I've done it many times. It works great, you know. It gives them very, makes them very comfortable. But I just prefer not to if we don't have to. You know, it's one of those things that if you can avoid it, it's better. But it's not dangerous if you have to do it. Huh? No, no, it doesn't inhibit fusion. No, not a one-time dose. Not even a two- or three-time dose. No. 
it's kind of like playing soccer. You know, if you can play the game and adequately get control of the ball and control the game without slide tackling, it's better. But if you got to go down, you're ready to do it. It's just you're going to have a raspberry to deal with for the next week. Anybody know what a raspberry is? No? An abrasion. A really bad abrasion. I used to get them. And at night, they would, your leg would stick to the sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and dry up by morning, and you got to pull the sheet off your leg. It hurts like hell. Point is, you don't want to slide tackle if you don't need to. But if you have to, to save the game, you do it. It's like with Toradol. You don't want to give Toradol unless you absolutely need to. But if you have to, you do it. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Right, Luis? All right, we need 10 minutes max and we'll be done. I'm just zapping away this. Look how badly damaged this is. It looks like a cave, you know, with a bunch of stalagmites and stalactites. This is all scar tissue right there from chronic inflammation. So clearly this thing was a problem for this patient, you know, causing a lot of pain and inflammation for him. I think he's going to be very happy with the results. But it's not an easy one. This is all scar tissue, solid scar tissue, calcified solid scar tissue. Bam. And the only reason I'm removing the scar tissue is because I, I think that there's some pain fibers in it that are creating some of his back pain. So there could still be some inflammation going on, and I don't want to leave it there. What time is it? Four? Four or five? Which one? Four or five? I'm just joking. Uh huh? I said you're a Doc, I don't know if you heard me, probably like eight minutes. Oh, this is a wall of scar tissue right there. Incredible. Do we have any questions, Kevin? No questions. No questions? Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. You see how he's responding more? That's because we're getting to the outer fibers where the most nerves are. And so this is like the worst area out here. We call this the annular debridement. This is what we do 95% of the time in a Duke laser disc repair. Debride the annular tear. Not happy about it. How much you'll be given on this disc so far? Thank you. Eleven. Eleven? Yeah. And the other one was over forty. Jeez, how is that even possible? I guess we were there for a while, huh? Oh, 25. Yeah, we started at 253, so we've been in there a while. Huh. Bring Grabzilla. Hmm? What? Bring Grabzilla. No. Yeah, we haven't used Grabzilla in a while. Use it. Listen, I bought Grabzilla because I thought we'd need a lot more than we have. Well, we need it. Huh? Yeah, when you need it, you need it. Grabzilla. You guys remember the name of that. That's so funny. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is Grabzilla. We call it Grabzilla. <laughs> In brain surgery? I don't know. That's not a, that tool is a tool manufactured 
specifically for endoscopic spine surgery. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not used in brain. No, but no, no, no. It's it's made literally to reach around and grab a herniation that's more anterior. No, no, no. But we do have pretty big pituitaries. I mean, the fact is, uh, if you're going to be taking anything out with that thing, it's going to be a brain tumor. And the brain tumor is that big. Um, they have a lot of blood vessels. So you really got to take them out piecemeal. We got a lot of bubbles. Are we near the end? Yeah, let's switch it. That's good. How's he doing? We're almost done. Is he okay? It's just a giant wad of scar tissue there. See it, Luis? been going on for a long time. I'd say probably 20, 30 years, at least. So are we going to have the side firing laser for the next uh, rhizotomy? Yes, we can. Oh, it's like never ending here. Just about done. Probably four more minutes. Boy, this poor man has probably suffered with this for literally at least 30 years. I mean, just looking at the amount of scar tissue. The scar tissue is proportional to the length and uh, strength of inflammation. Basically, the longer this inflammation has been going on and the more aggressive the inflammation is, the more scar tissue he's going to have. Are you going to make him a little more comfortable? He's kind of starting to get a little light. There's the end. all pieces of herniation right there stuck in the annulus see that just coming out grab her hmm what Honestly, think this is the most infl inflammatory scar tissue I've ever seen, ever, in any of my lasers. I think he gets the cake. This is the the worst one I've ever seen. Incredible. How much have we got laser energy on this one? Well, we're going to hit 20.
Should be one minute. You good? Grabber, just about done, 10 seconds. Let me get the grabber. <sighs> That's it. Let's see if we can see this nerve. Nope, it's buried in fat. So. I think uh, we're good. Mm-hmm. All right, nice one, please. Thank you. Well, I tried to show the nerves that are running just above the retractor, but unfortunately, not in this case. We're not going to see them very well. Oh, uh, okay. Do some irrigation. That's just a little antiseptic. We've never had an infection with any of these laser surgeries, but we used to use uh, this bacitracin, and now we can't use it anymore. We could use it, but it's hard to get a hold of because nobody's using it really. we're done well we're done we did two discs L45 L5S1 from the left side because the patient had left leg pain and back pain I expect his back pain and left leg pain to be gone we're all done doctor if you want to wake him up it's fine everything went well uh, the discs had far more damage than I expected based on the MRI Flynn will you pull that piece of paper off the MRI the MRI definitely shows the damaged discs, but um, it doesn't show the extent of damage to the discs. MRIs lack in that ability, but the endoscopy does show it. We're able to get inside the disc and see just how much damage there was. And from my observation of the discs, both of them, L5S1 and L45, they had been damaged for at least 20, 30 years. All right, we're going to close this up, but go ahead and take a look here. Kevin, you see the size of the incision? Seven millimeters, quarter inch. This surgery is done outpatient. Our blood loss was one mil, we'll call it. Ray Tech off the field. Go ahead and keep it running. I'm going to come and answer questions. Yes, sir. Rana, go ahead and run one of our testimonials. Okay.
Thank you, everyone. Great job. The inflamed annular tear causes back pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes leg pain. A band-aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. get his neck fixed. In the wild, I've, I've, I've trained animals for 25 years, uh, not jumping through fiery hoops. But I have a very special patient sitting here next to me who's traveled all the way from Tennessee. Yes, sir. I have a very special patient sitting here next to me who's traveled all the way from Tennessee. Yes, sir. With his family. I have a very special patient sitting here next to me who's traveled all the way from Tennessee. Yes, sir. With his family. For one purpose. I have a very special patient sitting here next to me who's traveled all the way from Tennessee. Yes, sir. With his family for one purpose, and that is to get his neck fixed. In the wild, I've, I've, I've trained animals for 25 years, uh, not jumping through fiery hoops, but just mostly uh, behavior, you know, no, uh, come is, you know, just a few words. No, we had 52 big cats, tigers, lions, leopards, cougars, link. This is me about six years ago in, in the tiger cage. This guy here, he's, we raised him from a baby. That's special. I'll, I'll tell you what, the special part is being here. And how long have you been dealing with this problem with your neck? It's come on in the last eight weeks strong, but after I start thinking about it, you know, uh, even six months ago, I was seeing things happen that I couldn't understand why. And I just want to get back to somewhat where I was at and get the feeling back in my hands, mm -hmm. my stability, a little strength where I can get this boy up. Well, what's going on, as we've talked about, is you've got these herniated discs, bone spurs in your neck that are pinching down on your spinal cord and nerves. And I'm gonna go in there tomorrow with a laser and we're gonna open all those spaces up, get the pressure off the spinal cord and the nerves so you can start getting some feeling back and strength back in those arms. That sounds great. That's why I'm here. I mean, I've researched and I kept coming back to you all and seeing the testimonies and seeing mm -hmm. watching hour after hour after hour of the surgery. And that, you know, that says a lot if you can do it live on Facebook. It's just a pleasure to be here. I, I feel safe. I feel like when we arrived last night, we drove everything from the place. And I told my, my, my crew and my wife and 
of my driver. I said, we have arrived. We have arrived. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow morning, all right? <laughs> Appreciate it so right, much. We did surgery yesterday with the laser. Everything went really well. You can actually see the four millimeter incision right there, three discs. <laughs> he didn't want fusion. And so he found Duke's Spine Institute and he came here. After the surgery I talked to, I was still a little bit drowsy. And uh, four hours later, we were sitting over at a restaurant, seafood restaurant, eating seafood, and I could clap my hands at the baby because he claps when he does something good. And we, I could clap with him without missing my hands. And you're already getting strength back in your arms and legs. You're getting control of your bowel and bladder back again. That's great news. It's a great sign. I think you're going to keep improving and hopefully get you back to normal. You are the best. That's why I'm here. That is why I'm here. It is amazing for the time I walked in this place. I felt at home. I felt like I was with friends. All the way through surgery, we walked into the surgical room, but everything's so clean. I, I feel like I'm in a dream. I really do. Thank you so, so very much for what you've done. You are welcome. form. Pressure on the disc causes herniation of the nucleus pulpus through the annular tear. Inflammatory tissue develops within the annular tear causing neck pain. The inflamed annular tear generates pain signals. Additional injuries can cause worsening symptoms. Inflammation from the annular tear can spread to the nearby nerve roots, causing arm pain. Pain signals travel up the nerves to the brain, causing localized neck pain. Pain signals reach the primary somatosensory cortex causing conscious awareness of neck pain. If you have a herniated or bulging disc in neck pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Traumatic injury on the disc can cause annular tears to form. Pressure on the disc causes herniation of the nucleus pulpus through the annular tear. Inflammatory tissue develops within the annular tear causing neck pain. The inflamed annular tear generates pain signals. Additional injuries can cause worsening symptoms. Inflammation from the annular tear can spread to the nearby nerve roots, causing arm pain. Pain signals travel up the nerves to the brain, causing localized neck pain. Pain signals reach the primary somatosensory cortex causing conscious awareness of neck pain. If you have a herniated or bulging disc in neck pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Traumatic injury on the disc can cause annular tears to form.
have a very special patient sitting here next to me who's traveled all the way from Tennessee. Yes, sir. With his family for one purpose, and that is to get his neck fixed. In the wild, I, I, I've trained animals for 25 years, uh, not jumping through furry hoops, but just mostly uh, behavior, you know, no, uh, come is, you know, just a few words. No, we had 52. Big cats, tigers, lions, leopards, cougars, link. This is me about six years ago in, in the tiger cage. And this guy here, he's, we raised him from a baby. That's special. I'll, I'll tell you what, the special part is being here. And how long have you been dealing with this problem with your neck? It's come on in the last eight weeks strong, but after I start thinking about it, you know, uh, even six months ago, I was seeing things happen that I couldn't understand why. And I just want to get back to somewhat where I was at and get the feeling back in my hands, mm -hmm. my stability, a little strength where I can get this boy up. Well, what's going on, as we've talked about, is you've got these herniated discs, bone spurs in your neck that are pinching down on your spinal cord and nerves. And I'm gonna go in there tomorrow with a laser and we're gonna open all those spaces up, get the pressure off the spinal cord and the nerves so you can start getting some feeling back and strength back in those arms. That sounds great. That's why I'm here. I mean, I've researched and I kept coming back to you all and seeing the testimonies and seeing mm. watching hour after hour after hour of the surgery. And that, you know, that says a lot if you can do it live on Facebook. It's just a pleasure to be here. I, I feel safe. I feel like when we arrived last night, we drove up in front of the place and I told my, my, my crew and my wife and uh, my driver, I said, we have arrived. We have arrived. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow morning, all right? <laughs> I appreciate it so right. much. We did surgery yesterday with the laser. Everything went really well. You can actually see the four millimeter incision right there, three discs. <laughs> he didn't want fusion. And so he found Duke Spine Institute and he came here. After the surgery when I talked to, I was still a little bit drowsy. And uh, four hours later, we were sitting over at a restaurant, seafood restaurant, eating seafood, and I could clap my hands at the baby because he claps when he does something good. And we, I could clap with him without missing my hands. And you're already getting strength back in your arms and legs. You're getting control of your bowel and bladder back again. That's great news. It's a great sign. I think you're going to keep improving and hopefully get you back to normal. You are the best. That's why I'm here. That is why I'm here. It is amazing for the time I walked through this place. I felt at home. I felt like I was with friends all the way through surgery. We walked into this surgical room to put everything so clean. I, I feel like I'm in a dream. I really do. Thank you so, so very much for what you've done. You are welcome. The inflamed annular tear causes neck pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes arm pain. A band-aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. It can take up to 12 months. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and neck pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Disc herniations are a common cause of chronic neck pain. The inflamed annular tear causes neck pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes arm pain. 
a band-aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. It can take up to 12 months. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and neck pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Disc herniations are a common cause of chronic neck pain. The inflamed annular tear causes neck pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes arm pain. A band-aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. Duke Laser Disc Repair.